And this is the quarter of New Julfa of the Armenians. This is the cathedral. From the outside, the dome, it looks like a mosque. This is the inside of the church with a lot of frescoes. This is the dome painted in blue and gold paint. This is the Armenian Ethnographic Museum from Julfa to Isfahan, the New Julfa. Hi, good morning friends. I'm still in Isfahan, the third largest city in Iran. And today I want to go to Fangs Cathedral. It's an Armenian church built in the 17th century. And they say the frescoes, the paintings there is amazing. So let's follow me and check it out. at the southern bank of Zander Yut River like two days ago we were in the oldest bridge here in the city and the southern bank of the river is actually the Armenian quarter also known as New Julfa now I have arrived at the Armenian quarter you can see the very rich quarter Omega Rolex you know they sell expensive stuff here and now as you can see this one is St. Mary's Armenian Apostolic Church, built in 1613. So there are a lot of Armenian churches, historic ones. I heard there are 16 all over the quarter. And we want to go to the biggest one that also has a museum that I heard keeps like letters from Abbas, also holds the first printed book in Iran, and many other things. And it's really a good place for youths to hang out. We were here a few days ago and that was the church just now and the church I want to go to is over there. Yeah, Armenian hotel. So the Armenians they were brought here as traders mostly because they are known as very skillful in trading in silk. Or maybe on the Silk Road, I don't know, or both. So as I show you just now, on the left is Armenia Hotel. You can see, it looks like a cross. And so this is the show Fang Cathedral. And this is the new Julfa, you know, be on the south bank of the Zayan De Road. Ozayandia River, life-giving river and this is the quarter of New Julfa of the Armenians I am here and the Fang Cathedral is right beside me it says it was built in 1606 even though the main building uh, was built in uh, 1655 to 1664 and just now we passed the St. Mary Church it's the oldest part, the oldest church in the region in the area and now the church, St. George Church we're gonna visit this one because it has the best frescoes and some museums and the church is this one right here and the entrance is right there a bit right there yeah that uh, that way some people are queuing already this is the cathedral the entrance and i heard you need to pay 100 toman about two dollars and i'm not sure if we can take video inside but let's see this is the ticket and so they call it our savior's cathedral or fang's cathedral and this is the cathedral from the outside the dome it looks like a mosque so uh, one thing that's really interesting about this cathedral is outside appearance it looks more Persian more Islamic but the inside it's very contrast it's very European in style we'll check about it later and here is the bell church bell and there is a museum over there and I think also another museum over there so the ticket price is actually 200 toman about four dollars but it includes the two museums uh, besides the church so first, let's take a look here. And by the way, uh, there are a lot of Christians, not just Armenian Orthodox Church members, but also Protestant and others who actually were buried here. There are like some Russian Orthodox and Ing Protestant from England. Okay, and this one is quite new. It's 1921. So they are like from the old era and the new one. And here, I already told you, this is the bell tower. It says built in 1702. And it's the graves and the cenotaphs. Let's check from this side, maybe. This one looks much older. And I don't know whether I can step on this. Nothing is stopping me. To so take a look at this, you know, 
the carving and it looks like ducks flying yeah and like two people on horses with traders in front this one is from 1843 and the letterings these are armenian uh, scripts they say it's written in armenian language i cannot read it and yes so this is very interesting even this one There are some bells here. Probably these are the old bells that previously graze the top of the bell tower. Currently there are two bells there as you can see. And another bell on top of the church. And probably there are more. Now we're entering this Persian style outer appearance of the church to the inside. This one quite Armenian in style and this is the inside of the church with a lot of frescoes. Amazing frescoes. This one looks like the depiction of hell. And Jesus seated on the globe with the all seeing eye and I guess the Father on top. The complex is a cathedral, but the name of the church is the Church of Saint Joseph of Arimathea, named after the old church in the original Julfa. And as you can see, this is the dome painted in blue and gold paint. There are actually many stories painted here. For example, this one at the top, it's the brazen serpent where people look at the serpent and they were healed in the Old Testament. And here it's Jesus crucified on a cross. So even though the painting looks random, but actually it's all connected. The bronze serpent depicts Jesus. And this one is the depiction of hell, the world, and maybe heaven. And here, there are again a lot of figures in the Old Testament, like this one. It's David running from Saul. This one is, this one is Solomon, rolling on the two babies. This one is Stephen Martyr. And here I'm told it's the church symbolized as a boat with Jesus on top and the disciples rowing the boat. And this right here, it's everywhere. This is Cherubim. Here on the third row, or maybe fourth, this one is more about martyrdom. Maybe martyrdom of Jesus' disciples. I don't know whether it's the 12 disciples or even future disciples. Yes. And it's quite interesting, like this one for example. I think it's been broken and we painted some parts of it. And you see the torture they need to suffer for the truth that they believe in. Yep. Wow. And the bottom part, it's more like floral, <laughs> geometric pattern. It's beautiful. And let's take a look at the main hall of the church. Amazing, right? And some, maybe still in use, here is the seat of the Archbishop. It's the cathedral and there is an Archbishop residing here. 
the creation of the world, Adam, Adam and Eve, and the trees of knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden. Okay, let's move on to the next room. Probably this is the main entrance actually and as you see this is Jesus and Jesus put down and you know the story of Joseph of Arimathea, the name of the church. Maybe it's depicted on this uh, picture here. Unfortunately, many of the paintings are now gone. This one probably still new. But as you can see, the decorations here. Flowers. And the angel. Look at the face. Maybe this is Armenian style. Many tombs. And actually inside, uh, there is also the tomb of the architect and the uh, archbishop that were responsible of building the church. I heard it's actually beneath the altar. And this one is relatively newer, 1922. And this is the courtyard of the church. Yes. And you look at the top, even the trees looks nice. Some of the pictures are gone, like the cherub here. But like this one is quite interesting because you can see only half a face and it looks like a flare of the sun. You know, makes you wonder maybe it is actually has a Zoroastrian influence and then erased. This one is the library, St. Narses Sterhali Library. And it says no entry for tourists. And now, there are two museums, and by the way, this is the dome. The first museum is the Ethnography Museum, let's go there. This is the Armenian Ethnographic Museum of New Julfa. So it's quite new, 2019, but the exhibits collected is like from the Fang Cathedral and donation from 17th to 20th century. So it will tell us more about Armenians' ethnic group. Yeah, historical. So this like Shah Abbas the Great. Move the people of Armenia, you see that's Yerevan, from Zulfa to Isfahan, the new Zulfa. So the fall of old Zulfa, it was during the, Arme uh, the war between uh, Safavid and the uh, Ottoman Turks. And some interesting pictures. Not sure if it's original. Trade. As I told you, it's the trade of the Armenians centered in Nujulfa, Armenian networks. And it's like the traditional clothes of the Armenians. And this one is the Edic. I think this one is a copy, I don't think it's the original. See? So I heard actually the museum kept uh, the original copy of, you know, the charter that actually guaranteed the safety of the Armenians by the Safavid king Abbas. And there are a lot of, you know, graves, kanataps. Now this room is about arts and crafts, home and family. So basically it shows the crafts and this one is for goldsmiths, silver works sensors, ceramics, and porcelain, design and fabrics, and the most interesting is this one. This one is the first printing press in Middle East brought by the Armenians to Iran. It's one of the first books. This is the second one. So, you know, that's the printing and that's kind of the result. And this was 
the book press. I don't know whether it's the original or the recreation, but this is the book. And about families, you can see the clothes and their to day life, you know, weaving with spindles and spinning wheel. And of course, the doors. And the very interesting things about houses in the Central Asia and Middle East is, of course, the doors. But the doors not here, these are just the locks. The doors look like this, a bit strange. Okay, next. This part is more about, you know, the house, probably of richer merchants. It's really good with a lot of decorations and culture. So, for example, it's for lunchtime, it looks like this with the clothes and the dishes served on porcelains. And a lot of the Armenians at the time, they work as uh, translators because they really know both the Eastern and Western languages. And they're often also sent on a diplomatic <coughs> missions, as written here. See, mostly as Talmak. Talmak means translator. And this is about the, you know, what the Armenians study at schools, very modern. You can see about projectors, static electricity, balance and scales, astronomy, mathematics, and even geography. They have a map of Africa printed in Venice. And this one is about the religion. This is actually a table, looks like a chair, but it's a table for sacred objects. And I don't know why there is actually a right hand relics here. I think it's quite uh, popular in Armenian church. And this one is their music for mass. It's known as Sots. I don't know whether I pronounce it correctly. <coughs> and you know, this one is like worn by priests. The head is called Kuir, or something like that. Aktakurak. Wedding dresses. Baptistry for, I think, uh, infant baptism. And theater more popular in a later end of 19th century and even cinema in the early 20th century I think it's about among the first in the Middle East and the last part of the museum is dedicated to prominent Armenian figures and not all of them are from New, from New Julfa but basically all Armenians they are painters, merchants, traders, photographers clergy and a lot of other things even the modern part here uh, you know there are some prominent figures for example this guy Kavalukas the father of robotics in Iran yeah, this is the face Kavalukas also the mother of astronomy Alinus Therian so uh, there are some prominent female figures as well but perhaps this one is the most interesting Diana Apkar, the first world's first female ambassador, in 18, uh, born in 1859, she was the ambassador of Armenia to Japan and Far East. Well, that's the museum, guys. If you are an Armenian, I really suggest you to come here. Even if you are not Armenian and if you are interested with this part of world's history and culture, I suggest you to visit the museum in Isfahan and learn about New Julfa and the, the center of Armenian trade network and Armenians in general. I heard there is also one more museum that we can enter. Uh, let's look for that museum. I'm not sure about what museum. This is the church of St. Joseph of Arimathea and that's the ethnographic museum. And here we have Kakator Kasavatsi Museum and this is I think Kakator. He's with the book it shows that he is actually the founder of the publishing company here in the early 17th century. And this guy, I read from the, you know, the details here, Saint Mestrov Mastots, founder of the Armenian alphabet. And let's take a look at the museum. This is the inside of the museum. I will not showcase the museum in this video, so you better come here directly. 
But one thing about the arts displayed here, other than the arts, actually there is something quite interesting. This is the showcase of Armenian genocide in 1915 by the Ottoman Empire. I think that uh, Turkey still doesn't recognize the genocide, but here, according to research, like 1.5 million Armenians in Western Armenia, in the eastern part of Turkey, a lot of genocide, one and a half million killed, and another one and a half million need to take uh, needed to take a refuge in the neighboring uh, countries. Yes, so this is the art and the handicrafts. Please come to the museum by yourself. That was the museum. It was pretty interesting, and the church behind me. Also another museum behind me, the ethnographic museum, and the last one is this one. It's a memorial, the genocide, 1915 genocide, by the Ottoman Turkish government. Okay, that's the church. Let's go to Bethlehem Church. If we can get in to the church, that would be great. We are back at the streets of the Armenian quarter of the New Julfa, Isfahan. Now we are walking to the Bethlehem Church. Hopefully we can get in because the interior is also uh, beautiful, I heard. That's the Holy Bethlehem Church. You can see the dome. It's that one. Unfortunately, it only opens from Sunday to Friday. So it's closed now. So we cannot see the church. Yeah. Anyway, so that's it for today. I still want to go to some other places, but maybe not in video. So goodbye. So I'm actually going to the Isfahan University and it's the guest house, I'm meeting a friend. Maybe if there is time, we're gonna circle the campus. Ikuti terus Bang Jago, sampai jumpa!